On the Business Courier front page centerpiece this week, for 15 years, the city of Cincinnati has taxed property to fund its operations in a way unlike any other large Ohio city or Hamilton County municipality. Leaving Cincinnati constricted, the city can't use rising property values to plug budget holes, fund more police and firefighters, or repair more streets and sidewalks. When properties in other cities are taxed, the tax rate is multiplied by the assessed value. Adjustments and credits are figured in, and property owners get a bill. So when property values rise, so does the amount of property tax paid. That's the way Cincinnati did it until 1999. But that year, pressure from anti-tax crusaders caused city council to make the decision to collect $29 million for operations, applying whatever property rate was needed to get to that number. The result has been a steep decline in property tax revenue available to operate the city. Cincinnati Vice Mayor David Mann calls the policy absurd. He wants to set the property tax rate for city operations at 6.1 mills, the level approved by city voters decades ago, allowing the city to reap the benefits of investments. But do others agree, and does Mann have the votes to change it? It's a complicated question, and one business courier reporter, Chris Wetterick, explores in depth in this centerpiece story. Chris has more on what he found and joins us this morning in the studio with business courier editor Rob Dom. Gentlemen. Peg, thanks. And that is a very complicated question, so I'm not going to answer it. I'm going to let you. What um, David Mann, very outspoken, used the word absurd to you. Um, on council, there are some other people who agree with him, but are there enough people to agree with Mann to get anything changed on this rollback? Not today. Um, you know, the interesting thing about this is that uh, Vice Mayor Mann was chosen by Mayor Cranley for that role, and they disagree on this. Uh, the mayor feels very strongly uh, that this is a, a good policy that helps homeowners, even though it only saves about $17 a year, the price of two large pizzas. <laughs> um, but, you know, there aren't, there aren't enough people. There's nine members of council. There's four who favor uh, doing some kind of adjustment to this, um, so he doesn't have the votes quite yet. So anytime uh, we look at something that's happening in Cincinnati and we're the only city in Ohio doing something, the only municipality in Hamilton County doing something, that's a, those, those ring bells for us. That We will try to figure out, are we right. smarter than everybody else or is there another story? Why did, in 1999, what happened to cause this plan to go into effect? It's really kind of an interesting backstory to this story. Uh, there's a group, of course, you know, called the Coalition Opposed to Additional Spending and Taxes, COAST. They were very powerful then. They're very powerful now, probably. They have a, a great deal of electoral, you know, oomph. Uh, that they bring into to things that they care about. Um, and they, they saw this as a good election issue. They saw this as, as one where people kind of hate the property tax maybe more than any other property or any other tax that they pay. And they saw it as a, as a vehicle to get a majority on council uh, to enact this policy. And it's been the, the case ever since. Uh, kind of joining them in this has been the, the local realtors, um, you know, who obviously don't like property taxes right. because it makes their job harder if they're higher. Uh, so they have, have lent a lot of political muscle and keeping this policy in place. But uh, the city has to balance its budget every year. Right. And at the beginning of every fiscal year, there are teeth gnashing and all sorts of uh, different things going on because the city never has enough money. Right. Um, is that what Mann is talking about uh, when he when he calls this absurd? Absolutely. I mean, the city has, has had a problem with its budget for, you know, well over, I think, 10 years, maybe 15, uh, when you look at the numbers, depending on how you look at them. Um, you know, and, and he believe you know, when, when this property tax rollback first started in 99, the city was collecting over $40 million in property taxes when you adjust for inflation. Today, it's only 29, so it's reduce the city's ability to balance its budget in an easy manner every year. Right. Well, this is a, this is a story I don't think that's going away for a while. Um, obviously, um, it's really impacting the city, regardless of where you fall on this. So thanks a lot for doing the story. Thanks.